Hey guys, welcome to one more video about RSA. In this video, we will see how can we do some RSA encryption in the client side and decrypt the same at the server side. Before starting, if you like our videos, please hit the like button. So why do we need it at the first place? Not the like button, but why do we need RSA at the first place? So here we have a client application that's made in Angular and we have a API that serves our request. Let's assume we have something sensitive as a payment API which sends a post request to make a payment and that is in clear text. So any attacker who is just sitting idle and monitoring your network can get this sensitive information. For monitoring any network you can use a tool called Wireshark. It's free. This is very dangerous especially whenever you are connected to free Wi-Fi. Who doesn't like a free Wi-Fi? And using the free Wi-Fi whenever you are doing some operations like for example you are accessing a website which might be making a simple post request but that might be leaking many sensitive information. To avoid this, the client needs to encrypt the sensitive field but symmetric encryption algorithms like AES should not be used as they use a single key and nothing is secure in JavaScript. So we need to use RSA public key to encrypt it at the client end and use the private key to decrypt the data at the server end. So let's jump into code. I have already uploaded this code in the GitHub. You can download the Git uh, link from my description box below. Okay, so I have created one folder called client app. So this includes our Angular code. And uh, in order to get started with the Visual Studio, you can just click on this uh, solution folder and it will open the Visual Studio code for C Sharp, which is hosting our web API. Now coming back to the, our web API code. In my last video, I had already explained how to use RSA public and private key in the .NET Core application. The keys folder contains the public key and the private key. So this is our private key. This is our public key. I have a file called RSA helper. It helps us in encryption and decryption. And if we go to our launch settings.json, so our API is hosted in the port 5000 and the launch URL. Whenever the application starts, it will hit this controller. So that is nothing but the status controller. The status controller will tell us whether the application is started or not. Next, we have one more controller called login controller. So the login controller is just as of now used to check whether if the username is technosavior and the password is test pass. If it is successful, then it returns as a successful response. That is true or false. Now coming back to our Angular application. So our Angular application has a login component. The login component has a HTML that will help us in capturing the username and password in these fields, username and user password field. And in the TS file, I'm just making a call to the API using the login username and password that was entered by the user. So if any successful response is coming or the failed response is coming, the application will behave accordingly. You can start the application by using npm start command. I have already started it and it's up and running. So I'll just start the .NET. The .NET web API is up and running now. We can use localhost 4200 to access the application. And once we start the application, it by default redirects to the path login. So this is our basic login form that I had created. I had saved the username and password. So that's why it is already auto populating. It might not auto populate for you. So make sure that the username and password are technosavior and test pass. Right now we will just hit on the login. So it logs in successfully and log out. It comes out. If we debug our code, let's see what response are we getting as of now. So I'll put a breakpoint here and uh, let's try to log in again. And you can see this user model contains the technosavior and password. That is technosavior and test pass. Now if we go back to the fiddler, you can see the request is made to the API slash login and it is very clearly visible in the network traffic. So any attacker can use this information and then we'll continue the application. It returns the response as true. We can verify the same in the fiddler. If you double click it, it will tell JSON response is true due to which we have logged in successfully. Now let's click on logout. Now the target here is to encrypt the password that is sensitive for us. We can also encrypt the username. For this example, I'll just be encrypting a single field. So let's only encrypt the password and try decrypting it at the server side. One thing to note over here is since we'll be using RSA algorithm to encrypt and decrypt. So the same public key and private key has to be used. For example, here, if we are planning to decrypt using this private key, then we should encrypt it using the public key. 
so whenever you, if you are starting the angular application for the first time you have to type npm install and uh, if you are using it in, in some existing project then you have to install the package called node forge you can find all the packages that i have used to make this code working the main package is the node forge so this is the package in order to install this you have to type npm install node forge then dash dash save so this will add the node forge to your package.json by using the dash dash save and it will install it in your angular application now next moving forward to the login component.ts file so the first thing that we need to do is we have to import the node forge so once we import it we can start using the node forge using the forge command Next here I have pasted the public key. Normally you won't do it. You will have a public key file. You will read that file and use it going forward. Then in order to use the node forge to encrypt it, we are creating an RSA object and the RSA object we are encrypting the user password. But this returns the response in bytes. To send it easily over the network, we need to convert it to base64 string. So for that I am using Windows BTOA. Now this one will give us the encrypted password. So previously if you see the payload was using a plain text password. So what we'll do, we'll change the payload to start accepting the encrypted password. Now this encrypted password will be sent to the login API. But the login API is not yet ready to accept the encrypted password. We need to start injecting the RSA helper to this controller so that we can decrypt the password and check whether the password is correct or not. So first thing what we'll do is we'll inject the RSA helper using uh, the RSA helper in the constructor. Now we'll use RSA helper dot decrypt and we will decrypt the user password. Now this one will give us the clear text password. Just as a recap, we encrypted the user password using the public key. And now what we are doing is at the server side, we are decrypting the password using the private key. You can verify it by going inside the decrypt method. So this is the decrypt method and you see it is using the private key. The private key is generated from the pause vendor key. So if you see it, it is this private key. This public and private key pairs was generated by OpenSSL. If you don't have OpenSSL, you need to install it to generate a new one. So our application has started. I have opened up the console to verify whether it's actually getting encrypted at the JavaScript end or not. And you can see our code has started reflecting here. So as soon as I click on login, so it creates the object of the RSA. And uh, next, what it will do, it will try to use this public key uh, object to encrypt it. So it successfully encrypted the password using the base64 format and this is our encrypted password okay so now our payload is ready i'll just close it so that the request gets proceeded and we ha already have a breakpoint at the server side so let's continue so the user object now contains the username in plain text and password that is encrypted if we go back to the fiddler just to verify whether our requests are encrypted or not you can see the same is encrypted so any attacker that is monitoring the network won't be able to understand what this information is. You can encrypt the entire payload altogether. So let's see uh, by continuing whether our decryption is properly working or not. So it tries to decrypt it using the public key and we were able to extract the plain text password that is test pass. So if you continue logged in successfully. Now if I try to give any wrong password, uh, for example, if I'll give one two three on top of it and I will try to log in so it gets the encrypted password again so the clear text password is now test pass one two four which does not match our requirement so this will send login failed so guys this is how you can easily transmit data in a secure format using the RSA encryption algorithms in angular and C sharp if you like this video hit the like button and if you are new to our channel please do subscribe thank you for watching